Hi everyone, welcome back to Symposium. My name is Zach Taylor. I'm the Director of Continuing Education here at Psychotherapy Networker, and this is the 2021 presentation of the Lifetime Achievement Award. You know, from time to time, individuals come along who create a new conversation and change the course of psychotherapy. Well, this year's recipients have done both. Their work began in Seattle, Washington, a city that has brought us many things we love and seemingly can't live without. Starbucks, Amazon, Grey's Anatomy, and John and Julie Gottman. You really can't talk about relationships, systems theory, and couples therapy without mentioning the Gottmans. As a couple, they're models of their own method. Two very different individuals in some regards who have created together a shared meaning and they love making each other's dreams come true. John, for example, is primarily a researcher who has described himself as an avid endorsement. You might find him sitting in his favorite chair, surrounded by the latest books on physics and mathematical theory. Julie is primarily a clinician, and ever the adventurer has been known to travel to places like Antarctica, and even spent her 50th birthday hiking at Mount Everest Base Camp, if you can imagine. Together with decades of research behind them, in what came to be known as the Love Lab at the University of Washington, and Julie's commitment to bringing that research into the consulting room, they've developed what has come to be known as the Gottman Method. But what a lot of people don't know is that the Gottman Method almost never happened. For much of John's career at the university, his research was confined primarily to the laboratory and to academic journals. And as I'm told, it was Julie who, legend has it, while they were rowing in a canoe. Maybe she can fact check me on that. It was her that convinced John to finally uh, bring the teachings out to the greater therapy world and that they should begin teaching therapists broadly the tools and techniques that had worked so well in the lab. And like any great idea, it started small with a local seminar and a flyer hung around uh, various locations in Seattle and other small towns with those little tabs with the phone number attached at the bottom that you would tear off and take home and call to register. There's many, many stories that could be told about Julie and John Gottman but perhaps the story is best told by those who have spent their career with them and know them the best. What is it that I feel like the field needs to know about John and Judy Gottman? Goodness me, that's <laughs> um, an interesting thing to think about. Um, they've contributed so much to the field over the years. I don't even know quite how to kind of move into that and begin to think about it. Um, it feels like it's really only in the last two decades that people, clinicians and scientists have started to actually sort of say to the public and to people that you can understand relationships, that there's, there can be a science, science can marry with something as romantic and vague and seemingly illusionary as a love relationship and that science can study it and science can understand it and science can actually help you change it and shape it. For many, many, many years, the, the dominant idea in terms of how you treat couples is that you heal the individuals. And so it was really just a, an extension of individual psychotherapy. And, and uh, John and Julie were not the first people 
uh, certainly who thought about the relationship as having emergent qualities that you had to you had to think about and address. But they they really were part of a generational change in in making that uh, the standard modus operandi for. For, for couples therapy and it's so it's become so common now it's just about unthinkable to think that the world existed in this focus on the individual way for for a really long time as as recently recently as the late 1980s <laughs> relationship science is almost nil there's nothing happening